hi again everyone um i made a video and i posted it on ig i did, I, I realized why i don't know the whole technicalities when you're dealing with facebook and posting videos that are about 10 minutes or maybe seven minutes eight minutes nine minutes it's crazy like you can't you could have post from now and i'm not talking when you're on the road i'm talking about when you have good internet uh service you know obviously unlimited service i don't know somehow you have to do live videos for it to work maybe it's just a way of marketing live using the live service of the facebook possibly um all right so i posted the video um regarding 17 year old jalisa mcgowan who died at i'm not sure if it's I'm, i don't even want to call any hospital name because i don't want to say the wrong thing whichever hospital it is in the arms of her mother on the basis of neglect and lack of compassion from some of the hosp hospital staff at whichever hospital it is I'm not even sure I have to pause a little bit because my, I think my energy has expended for the entire day so far well let's see I have to ask this question it's rhetorical but are you an asthmatic if you're not maybe you can go on your knees right now and raise your hands in the air and say God thank you I thank you with all the challenges and all the hardships that I'm going through or have been through thank you for not causing me to or allowing me to have asthma and this is from somebody who I, I don't maybe I should say suffered because God has been good for years now I have not suffered an asthma attack I remember the times when I had an asthma attack in my mind I had to fight for my life because I couldn't breathe it felt as though somebody you ever watch those movies and you see people put a pillow over somebody's face and suffocate them to death you feel like you're suffocating it's the best way to explain it when your chest is preventing you from breathing properly because the mucus is so hardened especially if it's a dry the dry mucus you know when you hear people cough and it's dry because the mucus is hardened and dry you would not wish something like this on the worst person on the planet you would not wish this on the worst person on the planet i can tell you that my mother wondered how i passed my common entrance i remember her saying that because it was as though every week i was in the hospital at bustamante staying overnight because my asthma was that bad as i got older i remember bits and pieces of bustamante I remember as I got older and had to go to the emergency, accident and emergency section by the university hospital before my mother gave up my demographics or what do you call it, the, the dem demographics or vitals, you know what I'm saying, my name, my age, date of birth and whatnot, to the hospital staff, to the nurse, the doctors, whoever it is that came to my attendance or to my, um, to my, in my presence and came to attend to me. The nurses and the doctors who were there, those earthly angels said, no, no, all right, here, put her over there quickly. Put her over there quickly. And quick, I don't know how they get the oxygen and the nebulizing machine up fast. And that was on my face before you could say who or that or what. Because it was a life or death situation. It's life or death. If I didn't get the oxygen, the nebulizer on my face, I may not have been here today. Unless God decided to, to work a miracle supernaturally outside of the nebulizing machine. Because I can't breathe properly, and the more you cough, the worse the, the sh it short it it prevents your breathing even more because you're putting pressure, added pressure, on a congested chest area by coughing, and you can't stop coughing because the area is blocked up. So you're gonna cough. It's trying to release and can't release because it needs something to help it to release. And the only thing that can release it, apart from a miracle from God, like when He part the Red Sea, is a nebulizer over your face and you have to talk to your mind 
you have to almost tell your mind you're gonna live i remember the last time i got an attack i felt i was at death's door i was gonna die because it was that bad i said tony and you're gonna fight in my mind i said tony and you're gonna fight you're gonna live you're gonna live you're gonna live tony and fight you're gonna fight i had to talk to myself young impressionable maga and I had to fight in my mind for my life. Because asthma is a chronic illness. You can't joke and you can't play with asthma. Because it's preventing you from breathing. Jalisa Mogoan's mother I was told. I, it took me somebody had to basically coax me to read the article. The lady was refused because of a lack of bed. When I went to the university hospital, people, it was a chair I sat on. It was a chair. I couldn't even be in a bed. You know why? When you're on the bed and you're on your back, it causes more. It's almost like a compression or something that is pressing on the chest. You cough far more and it weighs on the chest and it's even more problematic you have to get up because you can't take it anymore you have to get up and you have to either go on your side because you get so uncomfortable you go on the other side and then you go on your your belly area your chest area try to get if you want to get a little sleep when you're so weakened because of the constant coughing and you cannot breathe when i was at the university hospital i wasn't on any bed i sat on a chair when they saw me come in, they said, put it over there quickly, quickly, quickly. And as, f as fast as I sat down, that oxygen was over my face. As fast as I sat down, that oxygen, that nebulizer, nebulizer or nebulizing machine, whatever you want to call it, was on my face. Because it was my life at stake right there. My life was in the hands of the nurses and the doctors there. My mother couldn't help me. My father couldn't help me. No one could help me. So apart from God, which you know, but for the purposes of this conversation, you know that I'm talking about the hands of the nurses and the doctors. Jalisa Mogowan was 17 years old. A child. Still not an adult. Yes, John. And they want to spend $320 million to upgrade a building that was upgraded two years ago. 17 years old i can't breathe just that's why i say i give you the analogy of somebody putting a pillow over your face just put just make sure so just somebody put a pillow if you're you know or you do it yourself maybe if you do it yourself you're not going to do it to the point where you feel like you can't breathe but make some just the feeling of somebody coming over you to do that you probably start get frightened already i want to hyperventilate and her mother begged i was told she begged Please just attend to her. All they could have done, even if they didn't want to catch her up on a stool outside, but just bring something to her aid. Because that's a hospital, so they have something. Even if it's salbutamol, they want to kind of open the airways a little bit. Salbutamol, the name of it is that salbutamol. Serita, I, I, I've seen the name of it, the brown one. That is not really for, to, to, to prevent that. You take that usually, they say daily, to prevent the asthma. You know, it's like a preventative measure. They could have, if it's even to give her that, then give her ventide, something to kind of, and show her how to take it, because they know the best way, you know, and kind of slow it down again, until they can attend to her, find a spot for her to sit, and then they put the nebulizer over her face, but they could have attended to her, they could have attended to her, the mother said they ignored her, while the young girl struggling to breathe, they ignored her, they ignored her, they ignored her, and today she is dead. You know why? We're a wicked set of people. All of us were wicked and evil and cold and heartless. We are not our brother's keeper. We are not our sister's keeper. We couldn't care less about anybody else outside of our families. We couldn't care less what happened to anybody. All we do is say, oh, so sorry to hear. Oh, oh, oh. Nobody for years I've been hearing that they have issues with their machines. 
And many of us, I can't say everybody, many of us wouldn't even say, all right, I'm getting my salary, I'm going to contribute. Even I'm going to contribute to somewhere where they can buy a new machine or they can, or they can, uh, you know, I'm going to give back to some hospital or whatever it is. If I have to buy the, 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 the whatever it is that they need myself, I'm going to contribute. I'm going to make it a daily thing to contribute something. No matter how small it is for every big thing is the sum of small things. But no, many of us were so mean and stingy. We only think about ourselves. We only think about our families. We don't care. We're going to blame only the government. But it's not only government, you know, it's us too. If we as if we as a people cared about each other, Jamaica would not be in this condition. When you think of just government, it's us. We no business with people. It's a narcissistic society. Jamaica may attack. Me not care about no other country right now. A yes or me live and a yes or me attack. We no business with people. We no business. We no care. We no care. We have it. We, I wouldn't even bother that. You know, this COVID pandemic has showed me something that people really don't care about each other they really care about themselves even sometimes when they talk about put on a mask because people are this put on a mask and i look at it and i say look how all of us are so afraid of dying not everybody afraid when somebody don't have on a mask you want to scan them you want to stay far from them because you're afraid to get the covid afraid to die but yet when many of them had cried out before this covid pandemic that oh we are this and we're suffering and the, this hospital needs this help and many of us just walked on by we hear the news and we say oh sorry to hear that Oh, this but now that our lives is in the ballots we started this and we started that you see how narcissistic and selfish and self-centered we are and everybody's afraid to catch covid because they don't want to die and if you see somebody have on a, don't have on a mask in your presence and they're too close to you you're ready to call down heaven and earth upon them almost the authorities to lock them up because their life is at stake. And many of us knew that the hospitals rush on in different things. The, the doctors are overwhelmed. The nurses are overwhelmed. Many of them. For the good ones. Because you do have good ones. Maybe some are good but they are so overwhelmed that they didn't even know what to do. Maybe. And I might say. Jalisa Mogowan could have lived. Jalisa Mogowan could have lived if we had a heart of compassion. If we had a heart of compassion, Jalisa Mogwan could have been here today. If we had a heart of compassion, we have no heart of compassion. We have none because guess what happened? My friend is not sick. My mother is not sick. My husband is not sick. My wife is not sick. My child is not sick. So I really don't care. It's not on my plate. And we blame the government and we blame what? What have you done? Ask yourself the question. What have I done to make Jamaica better? Because I only love to compute, um, compare with other countries and say, Oh, this I don't care about that. This is where I live. Let me talk about the country that I live. I don't live here. I don't live there. I live here in Jamaica. Let me ask the question. If you were to ask yourself, How have I contributed to make Jamaica better? Like genuinely sit for about two, five minutes. And ask yourself, whatever your name is, I'm Tony Ann. You say, Tony Ann. And ask yourself, whatever your name is, how have I contributed to making Jamaica better? Before you, you take out the crucifixion stick and point it out to somebody else or to, to an entity or to other persons. How have I made Jamaica better? Sometimes I hear people blame this entity and this company and this and, and say all kinds of craziness. And they don't look at their, their own selves. They don't look at themselves to say, hmm, look how many golden age homes out there needed help. Have I contributed? I don't. For every big thing is a sum of small things. For every big thing is a sum of small things. So those buildings that you, the, the houses that you live in, the buildings that you see, it must be an extra steel. If it's 10 steel it took, they, they needed the 10 steel. If it is... I mean, you can't count the sand or the, 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 the mall or the, the, the blocks. If they needed 100 blocks, it took 100, not 99. So your contribution can create change. So instead of us putting the blame stick out on other entities and other people, look at ourselves, shiny tears at us, ask yourself, how have I contributed to making Jamaica better? Jamaica would not be in this mess if all of us actually were brothers keepers. 
our brother's keeper, our sister's keeper. Betty and Blaine had said years ago, just take up one child outside of your family member and care for that child. You don't have to take them in your home. You don't have to do that. But just contribute. Care for somebody else outside of your own. Just care for somebody else outside of your own. One. Make that sacrifice. Because everybody always never have no money yet. Every single body never have money yet. And if we had done that and helped to create some baby, Jamaica would not have been in this country. As bad as it is. It would never have been. You cannot. I, I hear people blame the government and they blame the opposition. They blame blame what their people to themselves. They alone can manage every aspect, every area, every I mean component of Jamaica. Really? And nobody wants to shine the light on themselves. For every big thing is a sum of small things. So start with you. As they, we're going to call it the sum of small things. Start with you. How have you made the lives of others better? You're going to say, buy my little 1,000 or 2,000. It can make a difference. It can make a difference. If you decide, for instance, let us be practical, that monthly you're going to contribute a 1000 or a $2,000 to this hospital or to this golden age home or to this child agency or to a friend that you know who is not working. Um, you might know a man on the road, you see him not... Um, He's, he's suffering and obviously not, you know, maybe to a mental institution. It can help. It can help. It can stir the pot and create others to look into that and, and say, you know what? I think I go and join Tony and on that one, you know. Or I think I can join Mary Sue or John Brown on that. Jalisa Mogowan would have been alive today if we were all our brother's keeper. Indirectly, some of us probably have family members who are nurses and doctors. How have we helped them to... How have we mitigated against the pressures that they face in the hospital so that when new patients come in, they have the energy and the strength and the wherewithal and the vitality, the vim, the vigor to attend to everybody. How have we helped them in different ways? Sometimes some of them leave work stressed and straight and by the time they come home they come home to another almost another hell hole to deal with and then to go back to work the next day because <laughs> Jalisa Mogon would have been alive today if all of us cared and not blaming no one person or one entity on this all of us are to be blamed me included every last one of us are to be blamed every single one of us are to be blamed because if we really check it, we have not been our brother's keeper. If we check it, we have not been our sister's keeper. We don't care about each other. Check yourself. I, I mean, sometimes people say, you can't say this. But what people don't understand, if I plant peas, corn will not produce from the peas that I plant. If Jamaica is in the mayhem that is in, it cannot be caused by because... Because... Um, because, um, because sorry. It cannot be caused on the basis of... Uh, what should I say? Only on the basis of what, if you want to say, bad governance. It has to be also with the people. For example, look at the COVID-19 pandemic. The laws of the land says, the curfew is at 8 o'clock. The laws of the land say, wear your masks, especially if you're in public. Stay six feet apart. Do all of this. Do not, you know, have the, the parties. Do not have this. And people break the rule left, right, and center. They do it the same way. It's almost like they say, you can chat where you want, chat, say, Prime Minister, me I do where me feel for you. You don't need to read Romans chapter 14. Read it. I don't need to tell I won't tell you. Read Romans chapter 14. Must be 13 and 14, I think. Read both of both chapters entirely. Ask God to give you wisdom. Don't just read like that because I find that many people, when they read the Bible, they take it on surface. So they see something and they don't read it with purpose. They don't read it with an understanding. Ask God to give you. I don't care if you're a Christian, non-Christian, Buddha, Rasta. I don't care where you want to fall. You could have worshipped the devil. Read those two chapters talk about respecting the leaders of the land the prime minister alone cannot do it his team alone can't do it the opposition alone can't do it you have to help there's no there are no two ways about it so if they say the curfew is eight we're in by eight if something happens, I mean, a one or two times, we're not going to make exceptions. That's a different case. Can be something like an emergency or whatever. We're not talking like that. We're talking generally, consistently. If them say, wear the mask, if they say, follow them. 
Sometimes God, you know, I said to somebody that you have true Christians who pray that God take away this COVID-19 pandemic, you know. And I realize it is a low because sometimes, you know, you know what it has opened my eyes to, to see? That we, we don't listen, we don't take telling as a people. We don't listen, we don't take telling. Nobody can talk to us. Nobody can talk to us. We're above the law. We are above the laws of the land. Now, when I talk about the murderers and the scammers and all of that, yeah, them commit for them wrong. So, but think about yourself. Because we love point. You, don't, you realize how we love point finger? You realize as a people we love point finger? Do you realize as a people we love to point finger? Not, and never yet go so. We never yet go like this with the finger. Or hold out this, the spotlight, the floodlight on ourselves. And that is where people like Jalisa Mogowan is, is dead today. You might say, boy, it's a hospital situation and they ignored or they neglected her and all of that. That could be the case. That really could be the case. And that was the case, yes. But when you think of the myriads of persons who have died from a respiratory illness like COVID-19, like Corona, asthma, and all of that, when we look at it, it really started from, you know, we don't look at things from the root cause. We just look at the, the, the um, what should I say now? The aftermath. We just look at all of that but we don't look at it from the root cause we don't look at the issues um from uh let us say from the home side of life what many of these persons have to undergo and then we just start to blame everybody else without looking how is it that we contributed directly and indirectly to all of this mayhem indirectly and indirectly to all of this lack of compassion directly and indirectly to the death of Jalisa Magowan and others. Maybe the hospital staff neglect was neglectful, and they were. But let us let us go in the history of their situation. The hospitals are filled to capacity. They're overwhelmed. I heard is which hospital has about eighteen or between fourteen and eighteen nurses resigned it basically at the same time. And they do that and then they go home to persons who make it even worse for them. Sometimes. And then they have to come back to work to deal with people who is who are begging to live, so to speak. And to deal with this one and they're and while having to battle living themselves because they're now some of them are assigned to the COVID nineteen ward and they have to know, okay. I have a sick grandmother at home, I have a sick mother at home, I have somebody who is, you know, who has underlying illnesses and the stress on the brain and they have no outlet, they have nobody to help them to release that stress in a healthy way and then they come back again to work. And if we continue like this, you're going to have more Jalisa Mogowans. You're going to have more persons dying, not only from COVID-19 or coronavirus, but you're going to have many more persons dying from some brain aneurysm maybe suicide and other things and I'm going to want to blame this and never yet we look at ourselves because it, there is a root cause to it you know so all of what you see in play out is, 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 is a tree the big tree that was grown up because of the seed that was planted I posted in a video you know that I find in Jamaica that we are an aggressive set of people that we're not from the more emotional side you know if you think of your own parents we deal, if a child commits wrong and uh, some kind of wrongdoing it may be mild ish let's say it that way we feel like we have to deal with it aggressive we feel like we have to deal with it vulgar we have to deal with it boisterous we have to deal with it strong and we and the child grows up thinking yeah, when the child seemingly conforms and cowers under that this when the child grows up that is etched in the child's memory in her his or her mind in his or is it once that gets to the soul that forms and fashions who the individual is and when she goes out get, get he or she gets older and goes out in the society especially the boys especially the boys that is why we face what we face it not just, not just overnight business and we could have deal we could have zo so so zo oh zo whichever way they want to call it little more we could still, it's almost like putting a band-aid on a big sore it's almost like putting a band-aid on a big sore. We have to deal with the root causes as to why we have no compassion over all people. Why a Jalisa Mogo and died.
You know what the Bible says? To, to, it speaks about repentance. You ever notice if your child does wrong, that God doesn't say to the mother, repent on the behalf of your child. It, it tells a child to repent. Because it starts with the human being. It starts with you. The transformation starts with you. It doesn't start with you blaming. Oh, I'm like this because of this. I'm this way because of that. It starts with you. Even if that is the case. Even if those secondary forces contribute to who you are today. I said to somebody, we are in the era. Or somebody rather said to me, we're in the era where we learn. Where we unlearn. And where we relearn. I don't care what you learned 20 years ago. You hold on to your fundamental principles. My principles, to be honest with you, is based on biblical standards. You hold on to that. You don't have to change that. If you have a principle that is good and solid and sound, you hold on to that. But when I say transformation, you may, for example, I use a pants thing. They use a scripture to talk about women must wear pants because it's men clothes. That's, no, no, no. Come on. Let's be realistic. You have some clothes. You can know when... You know, for, for example, if somebody's wearing it to have a, a very masculine look versus to have a feminine look, because you have pants that it's, it's clear cut, extremely feminine. So they take the scriptures out of context, and some things were spoken in a, in a particular culture, and certain things were behind it. So you can't just, that's why I said, don't take the scriptures and just use it for your own benefit. Because sometimes they do that, you know, we form a church and we form all kind of groups and cults out of one scripture, out of one verse, you know, as opposed to really reading it with a purpose and reading the Bible with. With understanding but the bottom line is people if we become our brother's keeper if we become our sister's keeper if we decide that look here I'm gonna be an agent of change you will have more Jalisa Magoans who will live luck live we're all gonna die one day now so none of us are gonna escape life alive we have to, we're gonna accept that so we could, have, we could have put on mask this and that till like kingdom come when God says your number call your number call and you're gone but in the interim You wouldn't wish, as I said, I'm somebody who suffers from asthma. You'd never wish asthma on the worst person on the planet. Take my word for you, you'd never wish asthma on the worst person on the planet. I liken it again for the third or fourth time onto somebody putting a pillow over your face and suffocating you. That's the best way to explain it. God has been good. For years I haven't suffered from an asthma attack. I would never want to again. I, I would never want to again. Just to think about it. I, I, I shudder to just to think about it. I shudder to think about it. You would never watch the worst person on the planet. You would never watch the, the person who did you the worst thing on this planet. Suffer that way. Can't breathe. Stifling. You would never watch that. It's a horrible way to die. And when I think of the young girl suffocating... And because of neglect and a lack of compassion and probably tiredness on the part, the part of the staff and everything. Yes, I understand all of that. But when I think of maybe the fact that others who are there, other onlookers who are there, maybe could have assisted the mother in a more helpful way. And that is why I say we could have been our brother's keepers. So you see the little picnic dying. You know why I say we could have maybe others who are watching. When I was younger, may I tell you, say, say the devil after me from, may I tell you, devil, him was a boy. And I, my mother took me on, what is the boating name again? Ferry. To go to Port Royal. And she was eating get up and gave me one. Lick a picnic. And because I get trouble, I'm, you know, picnic active and me. I'm a very active kind of girl. Even I'll know sometimes I want to me a picnic. And she's fe she felt me hitting her foot. But she think of me just I get trouble as usual and thing. And it's somebody who was, <laughs> let us call it, <laughs> my, bro my brother's keeper. So miss, you know, she say you look a picnic a choke on the, the, the seed. And when my mother turned on, she said, oh my God, somebody help me down. And she panicked, obviously, come and pick it like a girl. And it's a bony and mug. my mother said, the man, just come and take me up with him two feet, by, by me two feet with the man. I'll give me back a lick. I don't know if this thing fly down. You know, me throw to go down. You know, me esophagus and go down in my system. Or it fly, flew out. I don't know where it, that seed went. But because somebody was my keeper. Somebody looked out for me. Now, can you imagine? I'm, I'm saying to myself, in this 21st century, would have somebody would have done that? If I if I had my daughter and I didn't realize, I just figured this little picnic, I'm not paying her any mind. Would somebody have said, Miss your daughter, and come and rescue her like that? 
Would somebody have done that? So somebody else who was at the hospital must have seen it because you, when you, when you have asthma attack, the whole world can't see that. You can't breathe. It's seen. It's shown. Could have somebody who was there with a patient, you know? So, so, no, no, have to help me, sick girl. Please, when I cannot do that. When I have to put, if I give her the, where, where she can go, I put the mask on her face. The um, oxygen on her face. All of us are to be blamed. Others were there who saw what took place. And they could have really put it in the minds. Let us say the staff saw, but just maybe were, they were overwhelmed. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. They were so overwhelmed, they, couldn't, they just couldn't focus. But somebody could have said, let me bring them back into focus. I said, help! Because we're not going to make this young couple of people dead. We're not going to make her dead. Where we can put her now, right now? If she even have to turn up, because I say, you don't need a bed. If you put nebulizer over your face, you don't need a bed for that. You do not need a bed for that. Take it from somebody who has, who had a, well, I'm, I, I go and speak. The Bible says, call things that are not as though they were. Who had asthma, bad too. An onlooker who was there, must have seen, could have said no. We're not going to make this picnic dead. We're not going to make this picnic dead. If I for myself go find another nurse or doctor who may be a, a little less stressed or something but we're going to find somewhere where a nebulizer is going up and it's a pick in your face yeah. is she even up on the ground if they catch her up outside on a stool is she there in the tree pan care top but a nebulizer on a nebulizing machine is going to go on her face today nothing is as strong as the will of a person nothing is as strong as the will of a human being you know just think about it you know when you make up your mind as a human being say so you, you're going to do something you do it so nothing is as strong as will and uni and you and a unified heart and unified hearts and unified people that man had beckoned to my mother my mother poor thing panic and couldn't know what to do and the man said eh, eh, the picking in now dead today yeah today she now dead and he just lift me up bloop lift me up in my and lick me in my back and i'm alive today because of that earth angel i'm alive today because when i went to the hospital especially at the accident and emergency section at the university when i became a little bit older where i was too old for bustamante the earth angels those nurses and those doctors before my demographics was was given out she said no come 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 put her here so quick 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 and as as fast as i sat down that nebulizer went over my face i used to hate it because you know we need to be our brother's keeper and not blaming any one entity or any one individual all of us every including me all of us are to be blamed because we have not been what the society required of us to be in the in a in the way we ought to outside of our family we have not been we have not been i don't know what to say anymore i think this country has we have exhausted talking sounded very brilliant with some brighter than even einstein john newton and these people and stuart hall or whatever the name are those i mean you call them academia and brilliant people we have we have so many bright minds here philosophical man we talk one thing with this country we can if talking could have help our god would have would have probably been would have come out a third place a long time i'll be a first world country but that's all we do we talk we don't walk the walk all of us you think I'm excluding me? All of us. We don't we only talk. We don't walk the walk. We don't we, we really don't. We don't really care about each other. Unless it's your family member, immediate family member, everybody else is almost like I said, to hell with them. Basically, you don't say those words, but it comes out. Actions speak, you know. They speak. Very loud as well. I can only pray that we have a transformed heart. We have a transformed mind. We have a transformed soul it's a soul especially because if the soul which is a composite a composite of the feelings the emotions and the mind if that isn't changing you know, 